Thank you. We um, wouldn't be able to do programs like this without the next person I'm going to introduce. Uh, he's been up before, but our CEO, John Woods, um, everybody's been putting it in terms of uh, when, they, uh, when they were born. So John graduated from college the year I was born. Um, and, uh, and then from law school, as you saw from the video yesterday, the year before OSU was co-champion in Big 8 football. And um, my thought is that uh, while OSU has only been conference football champion once again since 1976, uh, John shows up every day leading us into a brighter future uh, for you and for your cities. Some of the things since uh, he's been CEO in 2014 that um, you probably know about and would be proud of include um, providing Lexapol for police training and policy development. Um, we brought claims in-house. Those employees now work for OMAG, work for you, and um, we think that's better. Uh, last year, we reduced uh, premium rates 12% in the liability plan. You might remember that, or you might have already forgotten, but uh, we'd, we'd like to remind you about that. We expanded earthquake coverage for the property plan in 2016, and then we've got these uh, two great programs we're rolling out today, recognition and retention, so we can get you back some, uh, some money and you can do some great things in your city. So, uh, John Woods, OMAG CEO. I hope everybody's had a good time. Um, if you haven't, it hasn't been because of a lack of effort on our staff. Uh, they've done an excellent job. Most of them are back there. And uh, um, But we have a special treat for you right now. Those of you who watched the video yesterday didn't know it, but you didn't get to see the whole video. So I think uh, you'll enjoy this next one, which uh, well, let's play it and see. you'll see what I mean. Welcome to the OMAG 40th Anniversary Celebration, a celebration of 40 years of extraordinary service to cities and towns across this great state. OMAG is unique, created, owned, and governed by the cities and towns we serve. The power of partnership brought OMAG to this 40-year milestone. Today, OMAG is the premier provider of general liability, auto, workers' compensation, property, and risk management services for some 500 Oklahoma cities and towns. Though it was a humble beginning in June of 1977. Closer to home, the Oklahoma State Cowboys coming off their 1976 Cold Big 8 championship season with big wins in the Tangerine Bowl over BYU and, of course, defeating the Sooners in Bedlam under head coach Jim Stanley. In the morning. Playing tomorrow's hits today, along with the classics. I am Lickmaster Cool, keeping the radio real in Oklahoma City. Not sure I've heard this live version before, but hey, no shelter needed today. It's a beautiful Wednesday evening. Hey kids, did you see the Star Wars movie over Memorial Weekend? Never seen anything like Darth Vader and the lightsaber fight. Man, I bet we'll be seeing lots more of those Star Wars movies in the future. Star Wars, nothing but Star Wars. Welcome back. And you've been making a lot of things happen, but, but none of it seems... Godlike. Yeah, godlike. Are we gonna do what they say can't be done? It's the first day of June, school's out, and the summer of 77 is underway. OMAG is founded with only two cities on board, the cities of Choctaw and the village, and coverage was limited to a life and health benefits plan. As more cities and towns join up, OMAG expands by establishing the Municipal Liability Protection Plan in November 1980. Workers' compensation was added in 1984, 
and the Municipal Property Protection Plan in 2001. While OMAG is the primary provider of insurance and risk management solutions for Oklahoma cities and towns, there is much more. Our partnership with Local GovU, for example, provides free online training in safety, human resources, law enforcement, and management. Partnerships with Luxapol and U.S. Fleet Tracking provide assistance with police department training and patrol car monitoring. OMAG provides scholarships for annual conferences and training. Our scholarships include the Clerks and Treasurers Conference, the OML Fall Conference, the Winter CMO Conference, new Chiefs of Police training through the Oklahoma Association of Chief of Police, or OACP, and the Code Enforcement Association Spring Conference. Conferences provide training and networking opportunities for our members. We provide grants for special equipment like sewer inspection cameras and police body worn cameras and grants for police departments seeking accreditation. And we provide critical on-site training and assessments for improved municipal operations. OMAG staff attorneys are available for phone consultation at no cost to members. And our member services staff is always ready to answer questions and help our members understand their OMAG coverage. For 40 years, OMAG has been a steady, dependable, solid partner. Even during turbulent times, when a hard insurance market meant mid-policy year cancellations and non-renewals, even for good risks, our Board of Trustees, elected by member cities and towns, understands the importance of providing services based on a first-hand understanding and appreciation for what you do. Collectively, OMAG staff has over 150 years of municipal experience. Experience that enables us to understand the unique problems cities and towns face. Matt, Susie, Gary, Billy, Kevin, John, Bill, and Stephen have each worked for cities and towns in Oklahoma prior to joining OMAG. Their knowledge and insight fortifies OMAG in claims management, in legal representation, in training, and more. OMAG, reliable, safe, consistent, secure, and strong. Yesterday, today, tomorrow. about 1977.
Compass. Yeah, how are you? It's good. Billy Carter with Old Mac. Hello, Billy. How are you today? I'm doing great. Good. Hoping you might share some stories with us from 1977. Well, <laughs> that was a long time ago. But I, I'd be happy to try. That'd be great. Thanks. To learn the rest of the story from the folks who were there, go to omag.org. With our brightest years still ahead, today we celebrate 40 years of extraordinary service. So I hope that uh, you will all take some time after this. Don't go right now. We've got some things I'd like you to listen to. Uh, but go to omag.org and uh, you can hear some of the stories of about uh, from our founding fathers and one mother uh, of, about the start of OMAG. Uh, one of the featured folks was our honored guest, Harold Pumford. Should I do this? Or? Oh, here's a picture of a dashing uh, young Harold back in uh, New York City some, some few years back. Um, now it is my pleasure to ask Harold Pumford to come join me. Harold? <laughs> I think they want to get a lunch, Harold. <laughs> John, thank you very much. Harold was OMAG's first CEO and served in that role for 20 years and two months. During that time, he made many outstanding decisions. For example, Harold was the CEO uh, when I went to work for OMAG and he personally hired me. That was a great decision. Harold is a member of a unique group of individuals from Oklahoma, a group that uh, once you hear about them uh, will help you appreciate this unique individual. Between 1994 and 2003, three noteworthy Oklahoma politicians and one self-described country boy became the leaders of national trade associations. All either moved to or remained in the D.C. area, except for that country boy, Mr. Pumford. In 1999, nine-term 6th District Oklahoma Congressman Glenn English resigned to become the CEO of the National Rural Electric Cooperative Association based in Arlington, Virginia. In 1973, Dave McCurdy was the quarterback of the Oklahoma Law School <coughs> intramural team, the Legal Eagles, and threw many a touchdown to his favorite tight end, me. <laughs> but more noteworthy and to the point uh, is that in 1998, then seven-term fourth district congressman, Dave McCurdy, became president of the Electronic Industries Alliance. Later, he became president of the Alliance of Automobile Manufacturers and then president and CEO of the American Gas Association, never leaving the Oklahoma City or the Washington, D.C. area. In 2003, Frank Keating, Oklahoma's two term 25th governor, became president and CEO of the American Council of Life Insurers, located again in Washington, D.C. Just before that, in 2000, after 20 years and two months as OMAG CEO, Harold Pumford left OMAG and became the first CEO of the Association of Governmental Risk Pools, or AGRIP. He immediately went to Chicago and Detroit to consolidate the disparate operations of that fledgling organization that he then based in Prague, Oklahoma. Another fun fact, eight years ago, uh, I was elected to the AGRIP board and once again got to work with Harold. Um, we are honored to have as our guest today Ann Gergen, the current executive director of AGRIP, who took some time out from her busy schedule to be with us. And as nice as Prague is, I suspect that she's not disappointed that AGRIP moved from Prague. Thank you, Ann, for being with us today. Ladies and gentlemen, a self-described country boy who led the premier public risk pool in Oklahoma, OMAG, for over 20 years, and who started AGRIP, the National Trade Association for all public entity pools like OMAG, is my honor to present this memento of our appreciation for Harold Pumper. Thank you very much.
And Helen, would you like to make a few remarks? We'd love to hear them. John, thank you, and uh, thank OMAG very much for the, the plate. Uh, and John did tell me that uh, he was going to give me a few minutes to talk. I'm going to start a timer here because uh, uh, they want me to stay on schedule. I've had several months to think about uh, uh, today uh, because I was made aware of uh, this anniversary and asked to contribute some things to it. And I, I want to share with you just briefly a little bit about where we came from, where I came from, and where municipal government came from as I think about the program that uh, you were just presented. When I started in municipal government back in 1969, I believe it was, we didn't have an Open Records Act. We didn't have an Open Meeting Act. We didn't have a Council on Law Enforcement Education and Training. We didn't have sales tax when I started. We funded cities and towns with water revenues back in those days. So uh, a lot of things have, have changed. And one of the things that became very apparent to me as I worked at the city of Ponca City, which we, we then met Mayor Nicholson once a week. We had a three-member city commission back then. And I thought that was frequent meeting. Then I went to Guyman as city manager, and uh, studying the minutes out there, they would meet three and four times a week, it would seem like. Now, most of those meetings were over the telephone when somebody wanted to have permission to do something. Uh, but in both of those communities, we had very good relationships with our county officials, with other city officials and schools. And that didn't seem to exist uh, across the state. And I became very fortunate that uh, uh, Don Ryder at the Municipal League uh, got a federal grant from the Intergovernmental Personnel Act Agency to uh, help see if we couldn't get municipal officials to be more cooperative in working together and coming up with solutions. That was in 1971. We formed OMOGIT, which was the predecessor to OMOMAG that was formed in 1977 that became OMAG today. What we wanted to find out was could municipal officials achieve more by cooperating together? And through the pooling, the idea of pooling risk for health benefits and pooling funds, we began that process. Today, that has spread across the United States. There are more than 500 public entity risk and benefits pools in the United States. It is a $16 billion a year enterprise that you are a part of. And it started largely in Texas and in Oklahoma. So today, I'm proud to say that you and the, the officials of your communities that went before you are part of the greatest success story in intergovernmental relations that has ever occurred in the United States. Greater than 701 planning, greater than 208 wastewater planning districts. Nothing has compared to what you, were, what you have accomplished. And I would leave you with this reminder that because of that, and looking at all the things that they have displayed for you this morning here, that you have available to your communities, that now the smallest community, Bowlegs down in my area, or Prague, or Payton, or Bowley, have the resources available to them that in the past were only available to Ponca City, Lawton, Enid, Oklahoma City, Tulsa. Today, you're able to do the things that they're able to do because of the commitment that you've made to being a part of OMEG. So the, the question is not whether or not you're going to buy your insurance from OMAG. The question is, are you going to con continue to cooperate with other entities for your mutual benefit? If you do, someday you might get a plate like this. Thank you very much. Two slides behind. A grip. Carol Pumper. All right. The other pillar of the twin foundations that OMAG rests on is Stephen Reel. 
who is city manager of the village, is a co-founder of OMAG. Stephen Reel is Mr. OMAG to many of us who work at OMAG. I'm getting a little verklempt, I'm sorry. Uh, but really, Stephen is a friend and a mentor, a person who has OMAG's general counsel, has guided its growth from two towns and an office in an old building with a hole in the floor to 500 cities and towns across this great state and built a beautiful building in large part through the guidance, through the guidance of Mr. Reel uh, in Edmond, Oklahoma. Time and words fail to adequately express uh, what Stephen means to me, to the OMAG family and to its 500 member cities and towns. Stephen, would you come up? Let's give you your commemoratory plate. And this is a memento book uh, put together by your staff, our staff. Um, that you can look at and reminisce and hopefully enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now I'd like Stephen. Whoa, 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 whoa. Come back here. Come back here. There's more. But wait, there's more. I'd like to give Stephen an opportunity to reflect a little bit on the last 40 years at OMAG. Stephen? Thank you, John. And, uh, Thank you for all of uh, you came today and uh, stayed. I presume you stayed for my comments and not just lunch, <laughs> but uh, I suspect some of you may have some hunger pains right now. You know, uh, about six months ago, Bill Tackett walked into my office like he typically does. He doesn't ever ask, he just tells you what you're going to do. and. Uh, so I looked up and Bill said, are you busy? And I said, Bill, I'm always too busy for you. And he said, no, you're not this time. And I said, okay, Bill, what is it you want? And uh, he said, I want you to, to uh, talk about it or reflect on the uh, <coughs> last 40 years or the first 40 years of OMAG. And I said, I, I think I can do that, I was around. And I said, Bill, how much time have I got? And he said, I'll give you 10 minutes. <laughs> so I'm gonna take a little longer than 10 minutes and, and share with you uh, this thing called OMAG. Uh, OMAG is an idea. OMAG was an idea that came into fruition and as we all know, powerful ideas have powerful consequences. It was back in uh, about 1973 or 1974, and some of us were in the office of Don Ryder, one of the great men in Oklahoma municipal government. And we were talking about the kind of things that Harold just mentioned. What can cities and towns do together, especially in the area of insurance, to provide constant, affordable, municipal, friendly insurance to cities and towns in Oklahoma? And it was just an idea at that time. But that idea in 1974 became the basis in 1977 for what we have today and we know today as OMAG. You know, to me, one of the great words in that title, Oklahoma Municipal Assurance Group, is group. We had an idea, but each one of your cities and towns and the officials that preceded you that are not here today, bought into that idea. That idea that cities and towns can come together, as Harold said, 
and collectively help shape our future so that we are in control of our insurance needs and training in the future. That was in 1974 and 1977. I want to take you back to a, a political mentor of mine, so to speak, a French, brilliant French man in 1825 named Alexis de Tocqueville. In Oklahoma, let's just call him Alex. Alexis sounds feminine, doesn't it? But Alex. Alex came over to the United States in 1825 because he wanted to study what democracy looked like in America. He had just come from the French Revolution. He wanted to see how democracy was playing itself out in this experiment in America. He traveled around America, and America in 1825 was, let's say, the Mississippi River going east to the East Coast. He traveled around for several years, went back to France, wrote a treatise, and the name of that treatise is simple. It's called Democracy in America. Now, what has that got to do with us and OMAG today? Well, I would argue a lot. Because one of the things he wrote in that treatise was this. And please remember, and I'm going to repeat it twice. Schools are to education what local government is to freedom in the United States. Schools are to education what cities and towns are to freedom. Now I submit to you, even though Alex probably didn't think of it like this, what he meant was this. Cities and towns, local officials exactly like you, have the ability to innovate and change things in your community to make a difference. The federal government, he saw, didn't really impact people in cities and towns. The state government didn't impact people in cities and towns. But what local government officials did made a difference in people's lives. And so that concept of innovation, that concept of the ability to be agile, to face issues in your community, is really, I think, the heart of OMAG. So fast forward now from 1825 to 1977, that's exactly what was happening in Don Ryder's office in the Municipal League. Local officials looking at issues, especially involving insurance, and saying, what can we do to be innovative to create something that had never been done in the state of Oklahoma, had not been done nationally, But they had an idea, the power of an idea, to create something called OMAG. And they did it. Now, we have in the last day, in the last couple hours as a matter of fact, and just with Harold's comments, have been applauding our successes. And they have been legion. But it wasn't always easy. Think back, if you will, in the last 40 years, how many banks, how many newspapers, how many restaurants, how many car dealerships, you name it, have gone out of business in the last 40 years. But OMAG has persevered and has prospered because of people like you. 
your cities and towns who keep buying insurance, your cities and towns who keep inviting us into your front doors to better train your elected officials, your police chiefs, your public works people, to make your communities a safer place to live and so that your employees work in safe environments. But I'm here to tell you, it has not always been easy. It wasn't easy for various reasons. Number one, we started with a staff that didn't know the first darn thing about insurance. We were municipal officials, but we learned on the go. We didn't have a draft of how this thing was supposed to play out. We didn't have a business model. But we created one as we went along. We had financial statements in the beginning that were redder than red. We had financial statements that the auditors would say, we see a financial weakness in your program. But you know what? We kept the faith. And we kept the faith because people like Harold Pumford that said, we will persevere, we will continue, because we believe in what you do. Because what you do in city government is important. It's critical. What we do in the building in Edmond is we try and help you be successful in what you're trying to accomplish in your communities. We see ourselves as a staff member. And that's the kind of cultural value that Harold brought to this organization, that John continues to bring to this organization, that the staff at OMAG have from day one have seen ourselves as part of your staff to support you to settle those claims, settle those lawsuits, and make life better for your communities. So what's the future going to look like? I wish I had 40 more years. I'd settle for 10 more, but be that as it may. The future is going to be great because people like John and the staff that you have today are innovative and they believe in what you do and we take that seriously as when we walk in the office every day, what can we do to help you do your job better? I say let's toast ourselves for 40 years of success. Thank you. I think Stephen's done an excellent job telling the story of OMAG for the last 40 years. His steady hand and the thoughtful leadership of Harold Pumford have played major roles in making OMAG, OMAG's story a long, happy, and successful one. I owe both these gentlemen a debt of uh, I can't pay for their friendship, their mentoring over these 27 years that I've known them. I'm truly a lucky guy. I'm lucky because OMAG doesn't have to make a leap of faith like they did into the unknown in 1977. We are successful, we are stable, we are secure. I'm lucky because OMAG has a board of trustees with the same passion that OMAG's founders and de Tocqueville had for local government. Every board member has a strong will to secure and foster a better life for Oklahoma cities and towns. I'm lucky because OMAG has an outstanding staff that shares the passion and brings a servant leader mentality to providing service to our members. 
As you've all heard during this event, the OMAG staff looks for innovative ways to give back to you, our customers, from the 12% reduction for the last two years in your liability plan to the recognition and retention program starting next month, our staff looks for ways to exceed your expectations. I'm lucky because OMAG doesn't have to turn the ship around. We're on course. We're headed toward an even better experience for the municipalities we serve. That's not to say we won't have to make some course corrections. But by using Enterprise Risk Management, or ERM, which you'll hear more about in the near future, we intend to continue successfully navigating the risk that OMAG faces today and in the future. Now, a quick word about the future risks. I must admit, I'm not very good at predicting the future. When I was in first grade in Denver, Colorado, my best friend, Glennie Mackey, and I made a solemn pact that when we grew up, we'd start a ranch, just like our hero, Roy Rogers. If you don't know who that is, see me later, I'll tell you who that is. Uh, and we'd spend our days riding on the range like cowboys do, like Harold Popper still does. Later that year, my father got orders, we moved to Spain, and I never saw Glenn Mackey again. So, so much for my predictions. But 60 years later, I look into that cloudy crystal ball of the future, I think I can see a little more clearly what may be coming. We live in an age of accelerating revolutions. I was born in the early TV revolution, which introduced mass marketing. Then the 60s brought the computer revolution, which involved large devices capable of sorting, calculating, and quickly processing things that were previously unsorted. And so we didn't know all those connections. We're now living in the connection revolution, powered by the internet, in which people connect to people, computers connect to computers, and our culture changes even faster, daily. So I think the two next revolutions that are right around the corner and we may have already, we're already in, include one, the biology revolution, which will transform our bodies and our planet. Once commuters, uh, computers can see, understand, and modify living things, which they did just last week, I don't know if you saw it, but there was a, an operation that was performed entirely by a robot inside a human being. Um, so I mean, it's already here. Uh, that same acceleration is going to continue. It's going to kick in. It's going to impact all of us. It likely won't affect the way we do property and casualty, but it probably will have profound effects on workers' compensation and health insurance. But I think what's really going to change things for us is artificial intelligence, or AI, the AI revolution, in which we engage with computers as much as we do with each other, and robots do the work. This is going to significantly change the business of liability and property insurance. For OMAG, this likely means the days of manually reporting losses, adjusting claims using postal service, fax machines, email, are rapidly coming to an end. Digital big data will soon rule the insurance industry and drive the way we do our business. Claims will be resolved in a matter of minutes, not weeks or months. Powerful computers driven by powerful algorithms will help drive down the cost of insurance. AI should enable us to better predict losses and even perhaps prevent them before they even occur, helping us improve the quality of our life in our communities and making them safer. Even though the future is still hazy, I think speaking for be on behalf of OMAG, we are confident of several things. Whatever these challenges the revolutions bring, we will overcome them. OMAG will continue to provide extraordinary service and innovative resources to our municipal customers in the future. OMAG can and will make your cities and towns better at what they do. This will happen through th further in in innovation driven by the Oklahoma wildcatter spirit that we all have. Thank you so much for coming to the celebration. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've taken away something that you can use in your city or town. 
Uh, we loved having you, and uh, we look forward to doing this in another 40 years. Thank you all.